Hello. Remember how we connected a couple Arduinos over Wi-Fi and then controlled some LEDs wirelessly? This project is going to change from cool to awesome. Let's go. Welcome back to EE for Everyone. I made a couple promises in the previous episode. I said that today we will benchmark the wireless communication speed design a way to compress the animation data to allow for multiple simultaneous animation streams with the bandwidth that we have. With that complete, I would create an animation that shows off the individual pixel control of our individually addressable WS2812B LED strips. We're connecting the LED strips to my Wi-Fi network using an ESP8266 module and an Arduino Mega. I got to thinking about these challenges and there wasn't a very good solution. The hardware that we're using Dang it, forgot the Arduino. The hardware that we were using, this Arduino Do, has a fundamental limitation that makes it imperfect for our application. The program on this Arduino Do will execute sequentially in a single thread. What this means is that even if we put a lot of effort into efficiently packing this animation data into as small of a payload as possible, there would still be a noticeable delay between when the first LED strip gets updated and when the last LED strip gets updated. I don't think that would look very good. Using the Arduino Do solution would also mean that as we add more LED strips, the refresh rate of the whole system will get slower and slower. There are four great words that completely capture how I feel about this solution. Nah, not good enough. Acknowledging that this microcontroller, this Arduino Do, is simply not powerful enough to handle my task at hand, I knew that I needed to use something with networking woven into the very nature of the processor. A processor that can manage multiple TCP streams simultaneously. This is encroaching on some high-level complicated code which is frankly completely over my head. With this in mind, I needed to go call up an old friend who just so happens to be both an extremely talented software engineer and just crazy enough to say yes to my weird ideas. Let's see how that conversation went. So the plan was to go ahead with the Arduino Do, optimize the channel bandwidth and get things rolling with multiple RGB strips, but I got to thinking, I think there's an easier way. The limiting factor, the most constrained point of the system is the hotspot right now, because the hotspot is limited to the bandwidth of any individual node. But if we pull that bandwidth back to my router, and we let the router do the heavy lifting, talking to each node individually, each node could support up to around 500 pixels without any compression. But that would mean that a computer would need to be hosting that TCP server and need to be streaming those frames out. Granted, then we could use the multi-threading of a modern CPU so we could handle multiple of these channels at the same time and there wouldn't be a connection limit so I could be transmitting to all of the nodes simultaneously instead of sequentially, making it look way cooler. So, since I'm way over my head, I'm gonna call up an expert. Hey man, how's it going? Good, you? Uh, doing well. So, do you remember that time where I said I was going to update our LED strip for Christmas? Yeah. And then I took uh, two years to update to <laughs> new LED strips, and... Uh-huh. Okay. So, the thought is, if I could have a computer hosting that TCP server and streaming the data, and all of the Wi-Fi like connected strips would connect to my router, mm -hmm. then I could have be pulling animations or generating them from like a web interface or from a file server, and then mm -hmm. stream that or have like an app on my phone that would connect or something. So how hard is it to make a TCP server on a computer? Um, pretty easy. Yeah? I it depends what language you want to build it in, but I believe, if I'm remembering correctly, I actually have a working one built in Python sitting on my computer that I did for a lab one quarter. So it, it like, 
So someone can open a TCP session and if they keep pinging it every so often, it'll just like maintain that connection. Yeah, I've got the, um, I've got another project that I'm working on where we have this robot, um, that we need to make it, um, run some like GPS coordinates. And so I open up a TCP socket to another Java program on the robot and just send the stuff over and the Java libraries take care of all the details. And all I need to do is set up a socket and then I can write to it and read from it like I can any other file. That's exactly what I'm doing. Oh, this yeah. is awesome. So you're streaming just like binary data through it? Or are you sending yeah. like, oh, that's exactly what I need to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so like, so for my Java program, um, it, I'm, I'm sending strings. So the one I built in Python, it was you would request file names and then it would read that file and then stream it over TCP. It was a web server. Uh, we built a web server in Python. To summarize, mess around with Java, there's a library somewhere. You have an example yeah. for it that I might be able to borrow? Yes. But uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see if I get comfortable enough to open it up to the wide internet. Just make it like mess with myleds.com. <laughs> nice. Well, thanks for your help. Mm -hmm. My friend really helped me out a lot. He set up some substantial skeleton code for the networking and client management, so all I needed to do was convert my for loops implemented on the Arduino into classes implemented in Java. Current state of the software allows for a single client to connect. This client is connecting directly to my regular Wi-Fi network instead of a segregated network hosted by an Arduino ESP8266 module. After connection, the client sends a TCP packet containing the number of pixels in the strip. After this is received, the Java program starts spitting out frames, waiting for the LED strip to acknowledge each frame before sending the next one. This acknowledgement is important, since the Java code can generate frames much, much faster than the Arduino can receive them. This setup measured the time taken to transmit a few of these frames with the acknowledgement in place, and it was about 9 kilobytes per second. This translates to a refresh rate of about 10 frames per second for a 300 pixel frame. Hopefully, this 10 frames per second will remain unchanged as we continue to add more strips to the system. There are three transitions right now. A sharp jump to a single frame of a single color, a fade from one color to another color, and a sweep, where a pixel or a group of pixels will stack on one another to make it appear like the new color is being pushed across the wall. I'm a really big fan of this last animation type. It really shows off the detailed control of the strip, and it creates a really nice effect in the room. Now I know what you're probably thinking right now. Wow, this looks really awesome. To that I say, yes, yes it does. But the code is still not ready. These things take time. A TCP server is now running on a PC. Data can be streamed to the LED strip from a Windows computer. This is a big step forward. Not to mention a big step forward that I really could not have done without asking for some substantial help from a friend expert. An expert friend? A Frexpert? Yes, I got help from an awesome software Frexpert. Next week, I hope to finish porting my spaghetti code into object-oriented code with an LED strip object and frame generator object. These objects will clean up the mess of code currently contained in my main Java function and will make it easier to add new animations and or compression options to increase the refresh rate. We, and by we I mean my incredible friend who I can't thank enough for doing this, will work on getting the website built which will allow for adding animated color sequences to a queue and a ship it button which will pass the requested animation sequence down to my lower level driver functions that actually generate the frames and manage the transmission over to the LED strip. The things that are left to do in the next couple weeks, beyond what we just mentioned, is to implement multi-threading for the TCP transmission so that adding multiple strips won't slow us down, grabbing new clients automatically as they connect, and then setting up animation generators and LED strip objects based on the number of pixels of each connected strip. We also need to allow for changing the animation without restarting the server or TCP session, and adding a digital off switch 
on the web page so that we can set the LEDs to black and then leave them alone so the strip appears to be off even though it's still keeping an active TCP session. I think that we got a lot of really great progress done today. We went from code that was not sustainable and really a jumbled mess and turn that into something that will be scalable as the project grows to accommodate more strips and more processing power. The great thing about pulling these functions into Java is that now the only limit is the processing power on the computer controlling it and the Wi-Fi router that's on my main network, since each client only needs to be as fast as that one data stream coming to the pixels that it's connected to. This makes this project very easy to scale, since we need an Arduino Mega for 300 or more pixels due to the size of the frame buffer required, but if we only had 10 or 15 or 20 pixels, perhaps an Arduino Uno would have plenty of memory to handle these functions. Then you can have different LED strip clients with different levels of processing power able to accommodate a certain number of LEDs that are all connecting to this one master server that's generating, scaling, and outputting all the frames to all of the strips. I think that sounds like a lot of fun, and I think it's cool because there's not really a lot of tedious software work. There's an algorithm running on the server, and all of the strips themselves just need to be hard-coded with the Wi-Fi network to connect to and the number of pixels that you're attaching. Sounds good to me. If you think that this Wi-Fi LED animation server project is cool, and this video is great, let me know by hitting the like button on this video subscribing to the channel, and leaving a comment letting us know what you enjoyed. Most of all, I hope that you learned something great today, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye!